Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Sea World Podcast. In this space, we know more about the life of Zumba instructors and get useful information for our class. This is the last episode of 2022, and I am very happy to bring Seth Steve Booth because we're going to talk about common questions that Zumba instructors have, some things of life coaching for 2023, and of course, how to save the mind in the right path to get the goals for the next year. So let's go right now to the interview. We have a lot to cover. My friend, Steve Bull, thank you so much for taking the invitation to be in the Sea World Podcast. For me, really, it's a great way to finish 2022. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's an honor for me to be here. You know, I will do anything for you. You're my friend. And the, the moment you asked me, you invited me for this podcast, I was like, of course I'm going to do that. So I'm super happy to be here, super honored to be here. Everything is going well, and I'm excited about this podcast. Thank you, my friend. So the intention of here is that we get a lot of information for our Zumba instructors, things that we can use for uh, for 2023, and things that we can improve yeah. day by day. So every okay. to every guest, I start always with warm-up questions, so we get into the conversation. My first question, my friend, what is an activity that you consider that you are very good at that is not Zumba. One activity that cooking. you like, cooking. All right, nice, my friend. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm a chef. I'm, I'm, I have an education in being a chef, so I'm a, a, um, a certified chef, and I love to do it, but only if I do it for people that I love. All right, very nice, my friend. And who is a person that you admire? Mm, I admire a lot of people for different reasons. If I have to think about, if we keep it within the Zumba world, I would say Cass Martin. Nice, very cool. And outside of the Zumba world, maybe a TV star, um, a writer, so, George somebody. Michael. George Michael. George Michael, it is so classic and cheesy, but that man was a genius. And I was growing up through a lot of difficult times and a lot of his lyrics and his songs really helped me put things in perspective because mm -hmm. I could understand what was really going on in his lyrics and I could feel what was really going on. So he, everybody has that idol that has music that helps them through difficult times. Correct. For me, that was George Michael. That's very nice. Okay, my friend, when you are not teaching a Zumba class, um, tell me two activities that you like to do when you are outside. I love going with my dog. Walking with my dog in nature is something that I really learned to do with him because he's a husky. So he needs a lot right. of walking activity. <laughs> so I thought, oh, my God, am I going to have to walk with him every single day for an hour? Yes. 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 Two hours. So that is something I learned to love. Nice. And what other activity besides going with Olaf? Um, I really love to go in my city. I live in a very small city, Bruges, and I love to just go walk in the streets, have go for a restaurant, go for a drink with friends. So I'm 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 a very classic person in that way. I really love to just wander the streets of Bruges. You've been there. You've seen how uh, nice and pretty and beautiful it is. And yes. after all those years, I still love to just go in the city shopping and classic things. Yeah. Yes. I, I want to say as a bonus for people that has the opportunity to go to Bruges, you're going to be wonder like Steve, Steve, <laughs> Steve took me to places that were so amazing that I still remember. So it was an amazing yeah. experience going to Bruges. And of course that yeah. you were my host that day. Thank you so much for that, my friend. My pleasure. My friend, what um, what book, movie, or TV show would you recommend us to, to watch or to read? <laughs> well, I would, I would tell everybody to go and write, uh, read my book. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, it's not in English yet. So I wrote a book, The Right Mindset, and I think it's a fantastic book, together with a colleague of mine, Delphine Stelon. So... I would tell people to go and read that book. If yes. you know how to read Dutch or Flemish, definitely go for that book. TV shows. Um, you know what I'm watching right now is the, the, the Netflix show, The Crown. Okay. And I, for me, it is so, it's amazing because now I'm watching a series or a, a season that has actually happened, happened in my life. So a lot of the things um, that I see reflects me back to my youth. And 
also because my mom, her name was Diana as well. Okay. And my mom had short blonde hair, was very classy, looked like a princess as well. So I remember growing up that a lot of people always re referred my mom to Princess Diana. <laughs> and for, for that reason, now the crown has a very special meaning for me. That's very nice. Okay, my friend, and to end the warm up question, this is the one that get people in trouble. And here it goes. If you go, for go, it. If you go to a TV show for a Zumba demonstration and you can just dance one song, which one would you pick right now? La Gota Fria. You, you're, you're, you're serious. Cumbia. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Wow. I, I expected everything but that. La Gota Fria. Wow. I, it I, is a song that I still today still use in my um, basic one training. And La Gota Fria, a lot of people know what it means. It's like you, when you get the chills, <laughs> when you get the um, goosebumps. Wow. Um, but that song brings back such an emotion for me and i every time when i dance it i feel like i want to cry i feel like i get goosebumps i'm like when is this feeling go gonna go away you know you get goosebumps from something and you just keep watching it over and over and then the goosebumps go away but with gota fria for me it doesn't yeah you know as i say i, I just can't believe because uh, you have bring a lot of music from from ages to zumba and saying this song of La Gota Fria, which is a Colombian song that every Colombian person can relate. Like you are, I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I get the chills thinking about the song even so. Okay, my friend, those were the warm up questions. Now let's get into the real questions that I want to ask. So for the next questions, I want to make a little overview about your career. And then here it goes. So from what I read and I know about you, you started around 25 years, 1997. You have done different fitness formats. You've been awarded. You've been sponsored by brands like Reebok and Nike for elite trainers in Belgium, Europe. And around 10 years, you became a CES. I think that you are now crossing 10 years as a CES. Am I correct? 13. 13 years. Okay, my friend, and um, one of the things that I see in your social media is that you shout that you have the best job in the world. Mm. So it's amazing to know that. So my question is, what is the biggest benefit of being a Zumba instructor? What is the biggest benefit that Zumba has bring to your life? The biggest benefit is the fact that you can teach a class and inspire people with it. I used to teach a class and I used to motivate people in that hour. Come on, good job, eight more, you got it. And they go home and they trained a benefit that is very superficial, meaning they come to a training because they want to lose weight, they wanted to tone their body, have stronger abdominals. With Zuma, it's different. That one hour is just the one hour of teaching, but you inspire them the other 23 hours during the day, during the whole week. Wow. And I think that is one of the most beautiful things that we have as a Zuma instructor is that we don't just motivate people for one hour to have the physical benefits. We inspire them to greater heights. And with greater heights is we make them believe in themselves and we do it with very small techniques. Good job, you got it, I believe in you. And you know, the whole Zumba energy is about, you can do it, you mean, <laughs> you're great the way you are. And it sounds very cheesy, but it's actually true. When you keep repeating it, people start believing it. People start changing. I see students now and I go like, you were different 10 years ago. And they say, yeah, it's because of you. And I'm like, why, because of me? You just inspire me to do other things. And I'm like, how did I even do that? It's a feeling that we make them believe in themselves even when they don't believe in themselves anymore. And that's the beauty of a, being a Zuma instructor. Wow. I mean, you give us a, you give me a great insight and of course why people love to keep going and build a community. Because as you say, at the beginning, maybe you don't have this, um, this self-love or you go through these situations, but of course, with every class, with every friend, with the instructor, you build such a great image of yourself that you want to keep going. It's it's super yeah. necessary. And I think, I mean, we just passed a pandemic. We just passed one of the hardest moments that we have to live in this current life. And many people stick with Zumba to, to oh, have yeah. 
for mindset, like for real. Oh, 100%, 100%. I mean, I have an online platform and teaching my Zuma class one hour in the week is just 5% of what we do in that platform. And what we do in the platform is connecting with each other, supporting each other and giving each other wings and believing in each other. And we do that through messages. We do that through a webinar where I explain them how to do that. So the, these days, the world of fitness have changed. World of fitness used to be, this is what you do with your body. And then it changed to, this is what you do with your body and this is what you eat. And now it changes to, this is what you do with your body. This is what you eat. And this is what you do with your mindset. So it's getting bigger and bigger. Fitness is not just about the way we look. It's about the way we feel. So great. Okay. So in 13 years, as I says, you have the opportunity to meet a lot of people, train a lot of them. And, of, and I suppose that people come back to you with common questions, or you may have observations for the people that you have coached. So what kind of questions or things you, you have noticed for, for some instructors that they could improve in? Confidence. Very rarely I get a question about hardware skills. And hardware skills are the skills you can actually learn. Mm -hmm. Cueing, dancing technique, uh, how to make a choreography. These are skills that I can teach even somebody who does not have passion for Zumba. Mm -hmm. My brother, I can teach him walk, walk, raise your hand, point that way <laughs> to, you know, I can teach him those skills. Right. But most of the questions are about software skills, which is all about confidence. How do I keep that passion going? How do I connect with my students? How do I... Um, if I have a student with um, a bad energy, how can I change that? Why do I suffer when I see that somebody's leaving my class during the class? Wow. So they ask me a lot of questions that have nothing to do with the technique of teaching a class, but it has everything to do with the emotion that we feel during the class. And that's what the most of the questions come from. Okay. Okay, Steve. So as, as you mentioned, uh, confidence is one of the things that they approach you the most. And, and I know that this is a skill that it takes time to develop, but what can we, what can be a tip for a, for a person that, that sees that situation that receives a, a complaint from a student or maybe sees somebody leaving the class and maybe that affects them? What is something that this person can, can uh, do to, to get back, to get to his mindset, to the right mindset to, to do his Zumba class? That's very simple. When you feel a certain emotion, let's say you're insecure, it's like you're wearing glasses, the glasses of insecurity. First time you got to teach, you got to sub a class, you walk in and you feel very insecure because you think that the other instructor is better and the students will look at you and they will say, oh my God, that's another instructor, let's get out of here. So we start seeing everything in a completely different way. That means when you're insecure and you're on stage and you're teaching for 20 people and one of the 20 people is looking at their watch, hmm. immediately your insecurity will create a story. Oh my God, she hates you. She's looking at the clock to see when as the class is going to be over. She wants to go home, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. So we start to judge without knowing the facts because we created a story, your insecurity is creating a story that is making your insecurity even bigger. But it could very easily be that that woman is training and doing the heart rate and checking how many calories she's burning, where is her heart rate? Or she's going like, oh, I only can stay for 50 minutes because I don't have a babysit, so I gotta get home, so I have to skip the last 10 minutes of the class. So they look at their watch and then they walk out before the, the end of the class mm. with a very, a, a reason that is very um, acceptable. You know, 50 minutes for her was better than no class at all. But we, as an instructor, get insecure. We see that, we blame ourselves. The most important thing is that we create an image of that person. We think, ah, that's the woman who hates my class and she's always doing this and she's always talking to her friend about me. And we judge them and we create an image mm. because what we do is we create an image to them. So we are not guilty of being insecure. It's their fault. They are talking about us and it's not true. 
So the most important lesson that I always teach instructors is when you start, don't judge if you don't know the facts. Whatever you see that is giving you a negative story, somebody leaving, two people talking, somebody looking at their watch, somebody doing this, you don't know the story why they do it. It's your insecurity that's creating a negative story, but could it easily be a positive story? Wow. Don't judge if you don't know the facts. I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put that in my board. <laughs> exactly. And it's a life lesson. You have to do it in life as well. When you walk down the street and you have a, a weird hat on and you're insecure about the hat, all of a sudden you see everybody talking about it and looking at you and pointing at you and you think, oh my God, that look, she thinks it's a stupid hat. She thinks it's this. And you don't know that. They might say, that's what I love. Oh my God, look at that hat. We don't know the story behind it. it the story that we're creating is done by our, our insecurity. Amazing. Thank you for that. Really, really helpful. Okay, Steve. <laughs> <Pleasure>. <laughs> many, many people that become a Zumba instructor, they don't come from a fitness background. They do because mm -hmm. of the passion and dancing. Now you, you came, you learned a lot about fitness and jump into Zumba. So my question is, um, what, what things from the fitness world should we focus or could we learn that could help us improve our classes? Well, the whole physical benefits, I think it's very important as a Zoom instructor that you do have a knowledge of fitness, physical fitness. You, de you do need to know what are um, important muscle groups to work, what you should not do in a warm up, the reason why you should not do it, because they learn you shouldn't do that. You have to do this. This is your technique. But you will gain confidence when you start knowing the reason why you shouldn't do that and why you need that warm up. So they always the classic thing is knowledge is power. And in this case, it's true. When people are insecure about their classes, most of the time is because they think that they're a fraud. Okay. I'm teaching a Zumba class starting from zero. Oh my God, should I even be here? I mean, all the other instructors are so skilled and have so much knowledge. Mm. Well, there is your answer. If you feel sometimes like, oh, maybe I don't know enough. Mm -hmm. It's probably that you don't know enough. Maybe I should take a fitness education. Well, that's probably because you should take a fitness education. And sometimes you can take educations for a couple of weekends or even a couple of days and already get a basic certification. And I think a lot of people should really do that. If your career is really, that's why we consider Zoom as a fitness program. Okay. So when you do a dance program, we train people. A lot of people say Zoom is a dance program, but it's not because dancers, we, we train them in technique. And once they can do a certain technique, we train them to do that technique even bigger. You can do two turns. We'll train you to do three turns. You can do a split. We'll turn you to jump and do a split. With Zuma, we don't do that. Once you have a basic technique, we stay with that basic technique and we just change music and movement, mm -hmm. but it doesn't get more complex. Okay. So we are considered as a fitness program. And I do encourage most instructors to really take a fitness program and, and take a fitness certification. So you get that knowledge. True. I, I feel that you're, you're right now schooling me. I mean, super happy. <laughs> <laughs> we are here in class with, with teacher Steve Booth. <laughs> It's in my it's in my veins to take over. And I know sometimes you know, somebody once told me, they said, You're very good with a monologue, but you're very bad with dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you might have a point there. I'm very bad in having conversations because I always take over and I always want to start talking. So stop me when I'm talking too much for no, sure. Oh my friend, I mean not everybody has the chance to go to a master class or things. You're all over the world. So having right now this conversation helps a lot everybody, like from things that we have learned about how to face insecurity, things that you shall that you you should consider for fitness, these things. Okay, my friend, yeah. I, I wanna I wanna ask you this. So right now we are on scene 102. Congratulations to you, to Cass, and to all the, all the Zumba Next Rising presenters. And how did, how did you feel about these volume signs? On this side, you have the rising presenters that you coach with Cass. On the other side, you, Cass, and the special guest, Dominic. So how does it feel, this volume line, which is a broad thing about you, or Cass? Like, what can you tell me oh, about I this volume? I think it's it just warms my heart. Well, first of all, 
I'm going to tell you a little story because what we get when we film a Zin volume is we get a lot of songs. We have to make choreography on them, but sometimes some of the songs don't make it on the volume. Okay. So this time we had like nine songs and Kaz said, okay, you know what? Kaz does four and I will do four, uh, uh, five and I will do four choreographies. And now what happens from the four choreographies that I did, two of them didn't make it on the volume. God. So I ended up with just two songs, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm so proud of the team. You know, when we started the whole rising presenter concept, we, we, we actually went to home office like two or three years to present that and say we would love to do it. And they were very scared because they thought that it would create a competitive side within Zin members and they would see it as a competition. And we say, no, it's a talent hunt. There's so many amazing, amazing Zin members out there who are fantastic instructors who just do not, not know how to get to that next level of presenting worldwide, being maybe on a Zen volume, making it as a jammer. So we wanted to create that opportunity. We wanted to say, look, Kaz and I, we step away from it. We want to guide you and we, we are leading this whole project. But this is an opportunity for all the Zen members to make it to a next level, to present that convention, to have your own session. So where we come from, sitting in a restaurant with our bosses, with AP and, um, and Aguillon and then the lawyers trying to present this whole idea to actually filming a Zin 102 with the whole team is just mind blowing. I go like, this is a really, because AP told mm -hmm. us during the final, he said, thank you guys for doing this. I'm mean, like, no, thank you for believing in this project. He said, no, this is, one of the best things we got going on with Zumba right now. And I thought that was a beautiful compliment because we got a lot of backfire. We got a lot of Zin members saying, not a lot. We got Zin members saying, you shouldn't do this. This is creating competition. And it's mm -hmm. a, no, it's not creating op a competition. It's creating opportunities. And then once we got the finalists, there's a lot of people say, yeah, you're choosing these because of that. And I'm like, it's a good sign that people feel because most of the time it's not what they say. It's the reason why they say it, mm -hmm. because it's a reflection of that is something that they want. And I want to do that. I want to create things in the world where other people look at and say, oh, they get a positive, jealous feeling about it. And a positive, jealous feeling means oh, I want that. I want to get there. I want to do that. And they start being inspired to do that. Some people express it in a wrong way by saying, ah, this is stupid. But I know what they mean when they say this is stupid. They don't mean it's stupid. What they mean is, I wish I could do that. Oh, you shouldn't do that because it's creating. It's not what they say. It's the reason why they say it. So I only see it as a very positive project of giving Zin members an opportunity. So I'm super proud to do this uh, 102 with the whole team and they did a fantastic job. Amazing. And as, as you mentioned, I like, finally having this opportunity, uh, refreshing, seeing new faces in, in a volume. It makes me think about, of course, uh, what is going to be a uh, Subba Next Rising presenter for 2023. Because uh, now the community sees that these opportunities are getting real, like shooting a scene volume maybe being invited to a Sumba festival maybe going to an academy like like you say yeah. opening opportunities that 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 help a lot of people and not just the winner like most of these no. these people that exactly. went to the final and also you know one of the things that morgan say that morgan say in the interview that i did to her was that she participated two times before this one so i know so what i like is like it's like sharpening sharpening the um the, the, the sword like with, yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah, yeah with every time it's an opportunity to get better like exactly what i'm trying to say to everybody even if you don't get to the final you get the benefit of learning a lot so definitely 100 you should 100 if you're thinking to audition for 2023 go do it because we want to see you right yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely and you know th th there's only five finalists or sometimes six <laughs> it depends on if we cannot choose um but it doesn't matter i mean those five finalists represent every all the zin members first of all and then second of all even if you participate we watch 
every single video. I got people mailing me saying, oh, I saw on the YouTube channel that you didn't watch the video. And I go to their video and I said, I've seen that video five times. <laughs> so I don't know what they see because sometimes they see there's like zero views. We watch every single application from one till we had over 700. Every single one of them, I'm sitting in the morning, opening my computer with my coffee, going over every single application together with Cass. So we see you guys and we see what an amazing job that you guys do. And we, what is very important is that even if you don't make it, it's a learning lesson for you because filming yourself, watching yourself, you start to realize we had people who were so upset that they didn't make it the first year. And then they make it years later. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you remember your first video the first year? They said, oh my God, I really believe that I would make it to the final. And then I watched that video and I go like, what was I even doing? <laughs> so they have to, they have to learn and they have to trust us. Nice. We're doing this with the best um, intentions. We want to give everybody an opportunity. And some people apply four or five times already and did not make it. And I feel for them because I go like, oh, I've... but it's like a marathon. We're not choosing people, oh, this one. No, we're choosing people, the first five that cross the line, meaning the five highest scores are the five people who make it to the finalists. And we're not saying, oh, there's two people from the same country, this one out. We don't do that. There are two people that would be this or that. No, the first five. And if the first five would be five people from the same country or five girls or five boys or mm. five non-gengers, it doesn't matter. It's the first five people that make it to the final. So I'm super excited for next year. Yeah, and, and me, we too, I mean, like, like you say, to, to have the opportunity to talk about this and, and for people to clear yeah. out that that is not like just a choice, but it's as you mentioned, like the scores, the skills. So it's definitely, it's something that you put a lot of intention into it. Thank you for that. Once we get to the last 20, we start scoring and we give them scores on different points and Kaz does the same. And then we put these scores together and we say, this is the top 10. And then that top 10 goes literally to home office. And that's when home office steps in and says, okay, this is our, my favorite. This is my favorite. So they start wow. just looking at it in a different way. But Cass and I, we have the final together with Nancy. Very, very <laughs> we have nice. the final view of this is the top six. So yeah, or five. Very nice. Thank you so much, my friend. I want to step out from the Zumba world to talk about about coaching. One of the uh, what I see is that since 2008, let me say this to the people. So one of the places where I could get to meet you more was that we crossed we, we crossed paths in one of Tony Robbins events, and I saw how yeah. inter how interested you and me we are for for growing for self development. And in 2019, you took a, your certification for life coaching. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I want to know is that, look, you started career with fitness, you did different programs, you became a sales, now you're a life coach, which means that you serve a lot of people. My question mm -hmm. is, what inspired you to serve this community? What inspired you to be a person of service for more than 25 years? Because it's the most beautiful thing you can do is inspire people. I mean... It's great to cook for people. They eat your food. They say it's great and they go home and it's done. It's great to teach a class. They say, oh my God, I had so much fun. They go home and it's done. But inspiration is something that they use for them to grow and to get better. And that's something that I was always intrigued to do. And I can do it through movement, but I can do it with words. And I, now having the combination doing both at the same time is really fantastic for me. And I, I, I started to see that I had that ability to use words to make people believe in themselves because what I say is not something new. This is something that's been out there for 10 years. I've seen it in a lot of coaching. I've seen mm -hmm. it in a lot of books. I'm not teaching people something new. So it's not the message that is new, but it's the delivery that is very important. 
And that's why I think that some instructors or some teachers in school, why do they teach? And I'm just looking at them. I'm, I'm in, I'm, I mean, I'm mesmerized. And I remember everything they say. It's because the way they say it. And okay. then you have another teacher delivering the same message and it just doesn't get stuck or doesn't stick. Okay. And, and I found that that was something that I was able to do to bring a message abroad or across to people because I've been in very difficult times in my life. And I, I simplify messages very easy with an example where people go like, yeah, that's exactly what I needed to hear. That's now I get it. Now I understand it. So I'm very blessed that I feel that this is something that I can do for people. Nice. Okay, my friend. But my, um, let's say we have very clear where is a fitness coach. We have very clear who's a basketball coach, an academics coach. But people is asking always, what is a life coach or what can a life coach do for me? So yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very good question because actually I don't really like the word life coach because people go like what is a life coach <laughs> for me i am feeling that i'm getting very specific with my coaching and it really goes to confidence coaching so i almost feel like i'm a confidence coach meaning confidence in something that you have to train when you want to train your bicep you cannot do one curl and say, yeah, I've done one <laughs> curl. I don't have to do anything for the rest of my life. Okay. You need to repeat it. The tool is a weight, right? Right. Then you got to do it, the movement, repeat. but you have to keep doing it before you see results. Mm -hmm. Confidence is the same thing. We have different tools to build confidence. Don't judge if you don't know the facts. Um, visualize, really look at how you would look with confidence like when people step into a room for a job interview, 90% of the people are visualizing a table with three people in a gray costume with a pen and with glasses ready for to interview you. We visualize negative images and ne negative situations. So a tool would be positive visualization. So there's so many tools out there then you got to do it and you got to repeat it even though when you feel like you have the confidence you got to keep training it so what i do as a life coach is really specific that i really love to go on confidence coaching and teach people the skills how to build confidence but there's so many life coaches out there that train in different ways to start a business to learn to see what potential you have or even when it goes to relationships and stuff like that. That is something I step away from because I truly believe that that is more for a specialist, somebody that's really specialized in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a psychologist at all. I'm just a man with a lot of experience and with the tools that I'm teaching, I did them. It's not just, let me see what tools do we have. Okay, let me teach you that. No. <laughs> I really did them. I really had to do that. I mean, I'm brought up in a world that is not, I'm not supposed to live the life that I live today mm -hmm. if I look at how I was brought up. So we can make that change. That's a long answer. I'm sorry. No, as I say, you're teaching. Yes. <laughs> is the, is the My first, monologue again. <laughs> is, is, the, is the time when I can ask these questions for people to have clarity? And we like to know that when we are in need of, of growing our confidence, we can look for Steve Booth and his program of the inner circle. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a great resource. So people, yeah. you have to get to know more about Steve and we're going to give you information in the next, in the next moment. Uh, Steve, so, so 2023, what I, what I always like to do for every year is to set goals because I think that this is, this is going to juice the year. This is going to give me perspective. It's going to give me purpose. And I wanted to ask you, do you have any strategy for setting a goal and the steps to achieve it? Do you use something that you define? What, what strategy do you use for this? I always say, make sure you set manageable goals. Manageable goals is you, sometimes we, we always say you got to reach for the stars and if you land on the moon, you're also happy. But I don't always agree with that because when I set a big goal, I feel like the pressure on my shoulder is really high. So I always try to set a small goal, but maybe for the first month, 
and then another goal for the next month. A lot of people set a goal for the rest of their life. Mm. Try to say, you know what? I want to be, I want to start working out. I want to live healthy. Okay, January, start with changing your breakfast. Don't say from now on, I'm on a diet. Wrong word, wrong timing. Start eating healthy. From now on, I'm going to change my breakfast. Never in the month of January, I'm going to have a bad breakfast. So I almost divide them in a minimum, a medium, and a maximum goal. A minimum goal is so small that 100% you know you can achieve this. So you got to make sure it's so small. Let's just say your goal is to eat healthy. Your minimum goal has to be something that you know that every single day you will not skip it. If you're going to say, my minimum goal is to not eat any junk food for the whole month. Mm -hmm. There is a chance that you might not <laughs> achieve that. So it has to be really small, like from now on, my breakfast is going to be super healthy. Medium goal is something that you should be doing, which is probably eating healthy every single meal, right? Right. right. But you got to say, okay, my medium goal is maybe eating healthy. And I allow myself to have one, two, three meals in a week. Maximum goal is when you go all the way. Um, no more sugar, no more fat, no more carbs, only healthy. Very difficult to achieve. So put them in three goals. A minimum goal is something that you will never break. You will always do. A medium goal is something that you should be doing. This is healthy living. And then a maximum goal is really going all the way, which is very hard to achieve. So people kind of never break that minimum goal. They try to stick with the medium goal. And if they can, they really try to achieve that maximum goal. And I also give myself permission to fail. Yes. Giving myself permission to fail makes, let me give you an example, Jim. I don't like to go to the gym. I don't. <laughs> 20 years I've been going to the gym, hate it. Not one time I went to the gym, I said, wow, I feel like working out. And still <laughs> after 20 years, I almost go every single day. And I'm thinking, how come that I can still do that after 20 years? <laughs> Is it because of the results? Not really. I'm looking at the mirrors and like, my body has not changed the last 10 years at all. So what I do is I said, okay, I don't want to go to the gym. At least put on your gym clothes. I put on my gym clothes. After you, you put on your gym clothes, you can decide if you want to go or not. Guess what? I put on my gym clothes and I go, okay, you know what? The next step, just go to the gym. Mm -hmm. stand in front of the gym and if you still don't want to go you can go back home so i give myself permission not to stop and i go like okay i can do that to the gym so i take all these little steps of should i do that when i think of a one hour gym or oh, i would give up so i think just go to the gym once i'm in the gym i said you know what just do two exercises that's nothing two okay. this morning same thing i was like okay i don't feel like working out okay steve just do the two exercises done and after the two, I said, okay, just do two more. <laughs> and I always end up doing a full workout. Always. And I go home and I said, that's really a technique that works for me. I give myself the permission to fail. When I go for a job interview, I want to sub a class. Give yourself permission to fail. Because when you give yourself permission to fail, you will get rid of the pressure that you're creating for yourself. And you will feel way more relaxed to do what you have to achieve. So, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yes. Yes. You know, I want to add also um, in one of your Instagram posts, I read something that stick to me the whole week and I'm planning to use. And, so, and it, it says that when you set a goal, sometimes you don't, you don't have to know exactly where you're going. What you have to know is that you cannot stay in the same place. And, exactly. for, and that really hit me a lot because, of course, we envision things. And as you say, maybe we put we put things that are hard to achieve, I have to say. But just to know that it's going to move you forward from the place that you are currently is enough motivation. You cannot stay here. <laughs> no. Another no. another one for my board, for real. I got yeah. that for 2023. I cannot stay in this place. And, and do you know how I see that? If I would go back 20 years from now and I would say, why, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? It's not what I'm doing today. 
Yeah. I have a dream job today and I never thought that that job even existed. Never. So if I 20 years ago would have said, this is my only goal, this is where I have to go, I would have never su succeeded. You have to look at your path as a tree. You're on the bottom of the tree. All you got to do is climb up. And all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. There are more possibilities here. Okay, let me take that one. Oh, wait, there are more possibilities and more and more. So when you're stuck, all you got to do is take a step forward and you will see, oh, wait, there are two possibilities here. My niece, my niece is so lost. She does not know what she wants in life. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, if you think of you could do anything in life, what would it be? Well, she said, I would love to work on a private yacht as like um, a servant to maybe in the kitchen or something like that. Okay. okay, perfect. But I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. Listen, you don't have to make a decision that is going to be stick, stuck with you for the rest of your life. Let's take a course. It's a two day training and then you go. And from there, you will meet somebody who has another possibility, another possibility. And in 10 years, you will have a job that you didn't even know existed today. So what you have to do is just take a step forward, do something. You will see possibilities and other possibilities. I am today, this is part of my job. I wrote a book, never thought in my life I would do it. I do online trainings, never thought. I would live in a, a, a great house where I do online classes in a little, uh, I don't know it's, how you call it, like mini studio, <laughs> a mini studio. If I would go back in 10 years and say, this is what your life is, that I would have never set that as my goal. That would have never been my goal in life. And yet I truly believe that this is my dream job. So take steps. You're standing in a field of fog. There's one entrance. What do you do? Stand still. You're never going to find it. Take a step. You see one meter more. Take another step. You see one meter more until you find that exit and then you get out. Great. Steve, making making a go public also puts you a little bit of pressure and also a little bit of motivation. So I wanted to ask, what goal do you have for 2023? Can you share us one goal? Um, yeah, I want to really launch my, like if I look at job wise, I really want to launch my um, my webinars here in Belgium. So the Flemish market, the Dutch market, because mm -hmm. I, I speak a lot of language and I have webinars online. So I'm doing confidence coaching and I just got approached by, um, even though it's not really something that, that I 100% uh, support, but they call from uh, the Miss Belgian contest okay. because they see that a lot of the finalists are struggling with confidence so i'm gonna go there and do confidence training with those girls um but it's very modern now these days you know it's all about how to inspire people and what how can we change the world and stuff like that so it's not the way it used to be 20 years ago because otherwise it would be hard for me to do that so that is my goal really setting my career more in flanders and belgium got you okay my friend and <clears throat> And you mentioned that you have your book, The Right Mindset. Right now it's on Dutch, Flemish. Is, is there a possibility that we have this book on 2023 in English version? We would love to read your book. I hope, I hope. You know, actually, I just got another email from my publisher that, because I just did like a, a big conference in the Isle of Man, like a well-being conference, and the feedback came back fantastic. I think like 85% had my session as the number one session of the whole convention. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that was really amazing. So a lot of people um, were trying to order that book and then they found out it was in, in uh, Flemish. So my publisher actually mailed me saying, hey, we got a lot of people asking for your book in English. So, but there's so many com complications that come with that and we got to come up with a, a good deal because um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be responsible for if it would not work, <laughs> not sell in English. And they're giving that responsibility to me. They say, if you want to translate it, you got to carry a bit of the responsibility. And the moment they will say, you know what, let's go for it, then then it will happen. Well, you, you let them know that I'm going to be one of the first to buy here in the United States. And I'm pretty sure a okay, lot of people me. would love to have this as, as another tool for confidence yeah. and for teaching skills as well. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much, my friend. This has been such a nice conversation. I am very happy to close the the Sea World 2022 with you, with all the things that we have talked about. I'm hoping that for the instructor that is watching us or listening us, uh, or listening to us in Spotify or Apple Podcasts, they can get to know more. And my last question is, um, they have here your information on where to find you on Instagram at the Steve Booth, but what other places can they go and check for your information? Um, let us tell us where to well, find you. As, as we said, um, I have that online platform called the Inner Circle, and I'm actually doing some because a lot of I don't know what happened the last month, but so many people contacted me. What is that Inner Circle all about? I think now they started to see the value of it, and they start to see that a lot of other instructors are part of it. So I have that online platform. I do webinars. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So when you're part of the Inner Circle, I can coach you personally with an issue that you have, a skill that you need to develop. So they can find a lot of information online. Actually, my, my name is steveboot.com. We're changing the website in January, so it's going to be even better in January. And we easy, even do, if people send me a personal message on Instagram, I can give them a code so they can do the first month for free and then they can see how it all is. So, yeah. All right, people, there you have it. This was a Steve Boot for the SeaWorld Podcast. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel and hopefully we're coming back next year with more interviews to know more about our favorite super instructors and useful information for our classes. This was the SeaWorld Podcast. Thank you so much, Steve. See ya. Take care, everybody.